everyone and welcome to Power Hour. I'm Laura Rogers and this is Joelle Jobson in the window. And um, Power Hour is a show we do Wednesdays at 11 Central. We've been doing this for about eight years. It started off as SharePoint Power Hour, but it is really just all Microsoft 365. The audience hasn't changed. So my audience has always been sort of power users, citizen developers, people that are not super technical. I am not a program, neither of us, <clears throat> excuse me, neither of us are programmers. Um, so it's whenever we get to something that involves code or splicing code, you know, I'm trying to explain it and figure it out along with you. Um, so we don't do anything super technical. We do a lot of things around business processes, automating business processes, power apps, power automate, things in SharePoint, like designing pages and, um, again, yeah, just power user type stuff. So. Uh, Microsoft just announced this a few weeks ago at Build Conference. There's a new feature in Power Apps that lets you import an existing image to become a Power App. So, uh, and, or you could also import something called a Figma file. So, that is what we're going to cover today. That that you all voted. So everyone votes the day before from the newsletter that I send out. You all voted for that overwhelmingly, and. Um, one of the things about the fun things about having Power Hour live is that we have our lively chat going on. So wherever you are watching this video, there's a little link below that says click to uh, request to join. And it is a manual process, so you're not going to immediately be added when you fill out the form because we invite each person into Teams. And so if you've already been invited, then you don't you don't have to do that multiple times and you go into teams just like you would normally just at work and then at the top right in teams you can click kind of next to your name and the drop down box up there and it will let you toggle over to iw mentor power hour iw mentor is our training company and once you're in there you'll be in a team called power hour and then that's where we have our chat so i'll go ahead and show you that when i start sharing my screen so that's the fun place where we can discuss and ask questions and field questions and um, talk about what we see. So, and this is, you know, this is a new feature. This is me unfiltered, my opinion, and um, just pretty unscripted. So you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and share my screen here. There we go. Okay, so we are in Power Apps here. And you probably noticed this, two new buttons here. So the first button is for an image of a form. The second is Figma, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So for the image, this, this actually needs an image file. Not, it can't be a Word document or a spreadsheet. So you're gonna take whatever your Word document is and you're going to take a screenshot of it. So, and right now, currently, it is just um, a one-page image that you can use. But it's got an example, so it says convert an image into an app. So we're gonna go through these steps. I'm gonna talk about what I think, how useful it is, scenarios where you might wanna do this, but um, we're just gonna walk through this process and, and I'll kind of explain what it's doing. So it's giving you tips as far as what the best kind of image is, like this is a very simple, image of a form on the left and this one on the right is kind of messy so trying to keep them simple is one of the things that it says here and then i click next and then it says upload an image or a screenshot so what i did was i went into microsoft word i'll go ahead and share microsoft word and i go to um let me go to create a new file and it's got this little button that says more templates. So what I was doing, it was I was just trying to find an example of a form, just something simple that I could try this process with. So I found this one called a client intake form. And it, as you can see, they have a lot of little templates and stuff like that in here that you could go search for forms. So the one that I picked was this client intake form. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, open that one. And so I didn't do anything with it. This is just the Microsoft, um, just the way the template looks. It's just got a bunch of fields for if you were, I guess, um, in, you know, having new customers and you wanted to add them to uh, your list or database. So what I did was then I used my, um, just did a, did a screenshot basically. 
and I just I didn't it didn't include this little these little office things at the bottom because I feel like those are just supposed to be like part of the um, those aren't supposed to be the part of the form that people are filling out so anyway I just did a screenshot of that and I saved that so that is the screenshot that I'm starting with so um, and again they they tell you that it can just be one page so right there that that might throw a lot of your forms out the window if they're multiple pages you you could go into word i guess and just like reduce your margins and um make everything smaller and just like kind of cram everything on to one page but it needs to be like a single screenshot so client intake test and i'm gonna say so it does have some samples we'll do those in a minute and I'm just gonna upload my own though, and I'm gonna go pick that file. Let's see, let me go find that. And that is on my desktop. Um, client intake form. Or not, let me go save it real quick. Let me just, oh yeah, I saved it in here. Okay, I found it, sorry. Okay, so there's my client intake PNG. I used a PNG file. I forgot that I was not picking a Word document. I was picking a PNG file, so I was in there looking for a Word file. And then it says, it always says phones recommended. I always like to use tablet, so I'm just gonna pick tablet like I always do and go next. And then here's the part where you're mapping the fields. So this, um, this is a process where you see kind of what it's, it's, it's kind of guessing already at what the fields are on your form. So when, like when you click on one, it's, when you hover over it, you can see that it says it considers that a label. So yes, that is a label. So I'm going to leave that one alone, but you can change it to something else. So this is a date. It says it's text input. So I can click on this and change it to be a date. Let's see, where did my date picker go? Yeah, date picker. And then this one over here doesn't have a box yet. So I can just draw a box there where it's missing. And I can say text input. Text input means where somebody's typing. Text label means it's just words that are gonna be showing on the form. And then um, I've got home phone. That one we've actually got, um, yeah, that's good. That's just gonna be text. Cell phone, email address doesn't have one. And I'll put that one as a text input. So you can see this process is, so this one tagged it as a text input, but it's supposed to be a label. So you kind of have to go through here and correct um, some of the ones that it's guessing at. So I'll say occupation business type. I could make that a drop down if I wanted to. That way, let me make it a little bigger. That way I could have like a set of maybe business types I wanted people to pick from. Date of birth, that's gonna be a date picker. Gender, I can make that a radio button, like um, have the radio buttons displaying across the form. You can see it's got a color coding here. So you can see each different type of field has um, just a different color code. And so this one's just additional information that can be text, input, and other text input, blah, 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 availability. I can make that one be like maybe a drop down. Maybe I want them to pick whether they're available for follow up via email or text or a phone call. Um, and then previous customer, that's a, just a question mark. So I feel like that should just be a yes, no. And then referred by, um, that's just gonna be a text input. That's somebody's name. All right, I think just, for, oh, I, let's see, did I do client name? I didn't do client name here. That needs to be text input and client organization needs to be text input. And I think I got them all. So as you can see, it's got just different color codes. I might want the states to be a drop down. I'll just leave it as a text box though. So once you've got all of your fields m sort of mapped and you know, kind of you're outlining where all the fields are, then you go next. And then it's got another sort of it showing you what it's guessing at. So like this thing right here where it says client intake form, it says it's tagged as a column. I don't need client intake form to be a column because that's the name of the form. So I'm just gonna say delete that. See, it's basically guessing at what all of the fields need to be. 
And then, um, so I've got date here where, see, it's kind of drawing a box around each one, but date really needs to be, I'll grab the corner of this. See, date really needs to be like this, ah, grab that. See, it needs to encompass like the word date and that little box. So basically you're defining each of your, um, like the label and the box. Usually I do the label on top of the box people are filling out, but this little template just happened to have them on the bottom, so that's fine. Um, and then client name, it doesn't seem to have one, so I'll see I can just outline. And I, I as long as I outline and I'm sort of grouping together these two things, the label and the and the control that's got the um, the text box or drop down or whatever it is, as long as I sort of group them together, then I can tell it a data type. So it's telling me, it's like guessing what all the different data types need to be. So this data type um, needs to be date for the date field. And then um, it, it, can, it shows me real quick over here as I sort of hover over each one, what it's gonna be. This one, um, this cell phone is kind of out of line, out of whack here. And I don't need this other box to be part of it. There we go. Cell phone. And then it's got actually phone is one of the types that you can pick from in here. So I've got home phone can be phone. And then um, that's, oh, I didn't change it. I didn't click save because the save button was hidden. There we go. And then email address can be email. Any questions so far, Joelle? Address, city, state, zip. It's all, all of them are pretty, so the more simple your form is, the easier it's gonna be for it to um, figure out, you know, what what the data, um, where, where all the data is, where all the fields are. So date of birth, that's gonna need to be a, let me scroll down. Date, oh, I got that as a date, that's cool. Um, and I can see over here that it got it as a date. All right, so pre it put previous customer as a number because I put Boolean basically, so it's probably gonna store that as a one or a zero, that's, that's what it's guessing. But yeah, that is the process of, now as you can probably guess, it's going to take all these and make cards out of them because that's kind of what a card looks like in power apps right where you have the label and then the text box so it's really just asking us to define the cards for our form and i can also um, zoom in here and zoom out and i can expand this and go back so i kind of go in and out as i'm doing this to make it easier um that process easier um okay so it's one final look at the columns um, I don't want this to be the primary name. I think I want company name to be the primary name. So I'm gonna say I want, yeah, the client organization is gonna be my primary key. I'll just say that. And then, um, let's see. Did it give me, let me go back. Oh, here, I, I don't know. I feel like I didn't see the screen or maybe it clicked past it or something. This is a This is an important screen. It looks like it was two screens ago, but it didn't. I don't know if I accidentally double clicked the next button or something, but I didn't. I was wondering why I didn't see this. Okay, so this first step is going to create a new table in Dataverse. So create a new table in Dataverse is if you want to use Dataverse as your database. And keep in mind if you're using Dataverse that that is a premium connector and that is going to cost more. Uh, depending on what license level everybody in your company has. I mean, everybody in your company might have an E5, so it's not a big deal. Um, if you work for a large company, but if you, if everybody's on an E1 and you just basically everybody can use SharePoint and you don't have any kind of um, premium licensing, this, uh, the last time I checked the licensing for Dataverse, it was like $40 per user per month, but then they, I don't, I'm not a licensing expert. They recently rolled out a new pricing model where it's only going to count for users that are actually using the app in the month. So it's not going to count all of your users every month. So that's a, that's a help. So anyway, so this time I'm going through wizard, I'm going to create the new table in Dataverse. And so that's why it's prompting me with all these actual data fields. And that's 
why those fields settings look a little bit different than what you might be used to seeing in SharePoint. So I'm going to go ahead and click create and it's creating my app. And go. <laughs> so what do you all think so far? Let me see. Um, put the chat here. So when you're when you're going in here to chat, you go to general tab and then you go to the tab for whatever today is. And then you have this little um, conversation button at the top right. And so you can push play on the video and then have, you know, be chatting with us while we're doing power hour. And I'm not sure why this has taken so long to creating my app. What I want to do is um, I want to go through the process without Dataverse and look and see what that looks like. So. Um, what I did was, let's see, I did one of those and I, it takes you through the same set of steps of outlining everything and defining everything, except when you choose not to create Dataverse, it just, um, I'll show you what it looks like. Let me grab that file. Okay, so here it finally created the Dataverse one, and I'll show you the non-Dataverse one in a second. So it created one screen. I've got a form control, and I can expand my form control if I want. But here's what it did. It created all these um, fields in, in cards in a form, and then it put these little vertical containers inside of each card. So that's kind of how it's lining things up like that, is just each card has a vertical container in it with um, the text input and the label. So you then you'd go through the process of it, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of messy, right? So then if you were gonna take this and run with it, then you go through the process of kind of spending some time aligning things um, fixing um, the way things look, the width of cards, um, fixing the way it formatted things. Like I've got a one and a two here. I don't even know what that is. That's supposed to be occupation. And it put a drop down and a radio button in the same box. So maybe I outlined something incorrectly when I was outlining and grouping things together. But um, so yeah, you'd still have a good bit of work here. What do you all think? You'd still have a good bit of work um, in you have everything in all your columns in Dataverse and you have a form control, but it is very, very messy and ugly. So then you would just, just be spending time cleaning it up and maybe changing things. Um, add, you have, you'd have to add kind of what the options need to be. If you chose drop down or radio button, you'd have to um, add those and instead of just ones and two, you know, numbers. And then like this is an option box for whether you're a previous customer. Anyway, so that's what it looks like when you have it done in Dataverse. So um, I did another one. Let's go just from scratch and do another one. File new. Oops, let me just go back to the main screen. I'm not gonna save that. Leave. Um, it looks promising. Yeah. It. So the question here that I want you to ponder, so let me do another one. And this time I'm going to do the same Im image, but I'm not going to do Dataverse. No Dataverse. Upload my own image, tablet. The thing I want you to be pondering while I'm going through these steps is does this wizard save you time in creating your um, your form. So um, I've got my, I'll do this again just real quick, um, text input. It's like it, it almost like it learn, almost learns a little bit um, each time I do this. Home phone needs to be a, um, that is definitely text, cell phone, email address, text input, okay, page I'm doing, kind of being sloppy here, text input. Oh, state is not text input, it's a label, so I have to switch it. 
so you can see why I kind of picked something that was pretty small and simple so that I wouldn't um, so that this part wouldn't take too long and then that one's gonna be a radio button that will be text and so yeah so be pondering the efficiency of this really is that that's kind of what that's kind of the first thing that I start thinking about is is going through this wizard does that actually make it quicker to create apps than it would be if I was just starting from scratch um all right I think I got everything and then next all right here's that screen where I'm deciding whether I want to create a table in Dataverse or skip for now if you're not sure you need data or you want to hook it up later choose this option and click create so when you do that it doesn't take you to that second screen where you're sort of putting boxes around things and defining all your cards it's just a shorter wizard and then it's creating my app um, Larry says two strikes against this for me single page and time-consuming UI yeah um, Paul says the amount of cleanup would not make it worthwhile for all but um, it, but very simple scenarios um, I, okay so here <laughs> is what it looks like when you um, don't pick Dataverse you um, you have it says client intake form at the top and it is a wall of labels and um, text inputs so if you were going to use this method what you'd be doing at this point you'd be renaming each of these and to give them proper names so that like text input 30 you would need to call that agent name and you'd also need to kind of start dragging dragging these around and rearranging the sizes of them so it's not a form control it's just a whole bunch of labels and text boxes so you'd then be kind of like dragging them around uh, I'm playing devil's advocate I'm pretending like okay if you were gonna legit go ahead and do this the steps you'd go through so you would be dragging the renaming them all um, dragging them all on the screen where you wanted to place them because they're kind of overlapping here then you'd also need to go through that process of setting up what you want the items to be in each of your drop downs and radio buttons and then for this one since it has no data source it is not a form control if you wanted to be able to take all these and submit data fill out the form and submit data to SharePoint or wherever you're submitting data to you would need to add the data source and then in order to submit data from a bunch of uh, just text boxes like this without having a form control you would be using a patch so you'd be writing a patch command and what you'd be doing is you'd be you'd say all right so this let's see I'll call this um, I'll, re I'll rename this real quick and call it um, T it's a date field but it's a text box um, and I'll call this um, I'm not gonna do all of these <laughs> PXT agent that's my syntax that I use so you'd say I want TXT agent to you'd have to go create a list in SharePoint that has all these columns and then you'd have to say in your patch command tell it exactly which text box is going to write to which field in SharePoint so you have about 20 or 30 fields here so you'd have to write this patch command where with 20 or 30 little um, sort of mappings in it where you're typing out the names of all of the um, controls and then which control sends its data to which information in SharePoint and then that would just be for submitting a form then since there's no form control um, it would be even more complicated to open an existing form and try and look at the data in it it might be easier to just um, yeah you'd have to go in here and change like the defaults for all these to default to some very very record maybe that you're using so it would be extremely tedious and complicated to try and use this to submit data to SharePoint so um, but it it did line it up and it did make it kind of look like it's in the same order as what was in that um, 
in that form that we picked. Now, what we're going to do next is I'll go ahead and save this. And then we'll, we're going to go through one of the wizards of what they had with um, like the little sample data. So the first time I did this, I went ahead and just used my, um, my own form. I'm going to go ahead and use their sample data and try that. So image, next, and then start with a sample image. So it's got a registration form, appointment scheduler, event survey, um, like a reservation. Let me see, scroll across. Membership form, that's cool. Let's do the membership form. And I'll say membership. And I'll say tablet, next. And we'll see what our membership form looks like. All right, so we've got, um, this is the part where we're mapping everything. So pretty much since this is one of their templates, everything's already mapped. I mean, it's already correct. It's got, um, this is, let's see, it says it's a radio button. Um, that, that needs to be a date picker. Email address, blah, 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 blah. That one needs to be a checkbox. It already is. Okay, so then those are all, that's pretty simple. Those are mapped. Then I'm going to skip the creating a table in Dataverse because um, maybe I'm a small company. I can't afford Dataverse. All right, and then it's creating my Power App from the sample form. What's it? What does it? What does everybody think, Joelle? We'll go look at Figma next. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. Um, okay, so this is got. Oh, it's even got a submit and a cancel button. So my um, my client intake form that I had, I I hadn't put any kind of buttons or any kind of rectangles re representing buttons or anything like that on it. So it didn't have any buttons when I generated the Power App, but this one does. But it is also still a wall of labels and text inputs, and I would still also need to be going through that process of, of writing a patch command since there is no form control. That's the benefit of using the form control in a Power App is that all you have to do is a submit form action, and it just takes everything in the form control and submits it to your, to your data source. So... All right, so that's my membership form. Um, save as membership form, there we go. Okay, I don't, oh, to here. Okay, so then the next wizard we're gonna go through is the Figma. So what is Figma? Um, when you go to that main screen and you see this Figma preview thing, it, said, it has a hyperlink. So it says design an app using the Figma UI kit. It will create a Canvas app based on that design. So when you click on Figma UI kit, that actually takes you to Figma to create your own free ac account. I, I went ahead and just created a free account just based on my, um, on my Google account. And then this is what you're taken to. So it takes you through a little wizard that kind of walks you around the screen explaining what things are. But I went ahead and created a new app and um, I'll show you what it looks like. It is a big blank canvas. So um, I created, it's, it's, I feel like it's even blanker than a canvas app when you start with that. So then what I did was I created another new one. Um, see, it's got new design file or new fig jam file. I did new design file. So let me delete this um, other one that I did. Let's see if I can just delete. Yeah, I'll delete that. Because the free account only lets you have three. So the, these are the things that I clicked on. So new design file. And then um, this is what you're taken to. So I'll show you one that I kind of started and I put like a tab, uh, like a phone shape in here. And I kind of started making it look like an app with a couple of labels and things. So I, I added a um, rectangle from this list of little shapes in you, that you can add. And I added a text box with this little T. I 
made it purple. See, it's got like a fill color and um, selection colors. And then this is a rectangle and this is a rectangle. Um, I, again, I'm not a designer, but I feel like this would be great if you actually had a design team that was making very lovely power apps and you needed to have certain colors and you needed to have certain shapes and a, like a general look and feel of, of your power app with um, very highly designed. So more of like a pretty power app than necessarily like business form functionality. Does that make sense? So I'm not sure um, just from looking at this what the process would be for adding like a text input box. So that's why I just created rectangles for these. So it, it, it wasn't anything like super obvious that I could um, do in here. So um, anyway, I just wanted to have something whipped up so you could see kind of how that process works. So the next thing I did, um, did anybody have any questions about that? <laughs> um, no. The next thing I did was I, I said, okay, I'm going to create a Canvas app from Figma. So I give the app a name and it says link to Figma page or frame. So the trick to this is that you don't want to try and give them a link. You're not going to be sharing. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to click that. You're not going to be sharing the whole app and getting a link to the app. That's kind of the first thing that I thought to do. It wants you to right click on the page itself and go get um, go get a link to that. So um, I've got, I don't know where it went, but I found it. I found it a second ago. So you just right click on the page and then that's where you need to get the hyperlink to the page. So that apparently in the help file in the commonly asked questions, that was like the first thing, like the most common thing that people do wrong is they try and get the link to the whole app. So I got the link to this which is, where did it go? Um, I feel like I need to show you where the hyperlink was, but now I can't find it. That's weird. Anyway. Hmm. Um, okay, well it had a little co copy link there, I, I, I think. <laughs> okay, so then um, you have to give it the link and you have to just paste that here. And then you have to do a personal access token. So that's gonna be in Figma, not in the project itself, but in the main, oops, in the main um, screen where you are. I, I can't show you um, the access token. It says not to share it with anyone. <laughs> it's top secret, but you go into settings and you go to your access token down here and it's kind of confusing because it's not obvious how to make it generate the access token, but you just type some words in here and you hit enter. So it's not obvious that you have to hit enter because there are no buttons to click. So you type something and hit enter and then it generates an access token for you and then that's what you paste over here. It's like a big long cryptic thing. And then you click create and then um, I think I saved that one. Um, no, I didn't. Let me go ahead and um, do that one then. So test Figma and then um, personal access token. I have to copy that. Um, 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 test hit enter. Oh yeah, there it is, copy this token. So you can't see that, it's top secret. And then link to Figma page or frame. That's the part where I was confused. Page or frame. I swear I cannot see where that hyperlink thing went, hold on. Um, I might have to skip this. So yeah, here it is. Invalid link, copy a specific page or frame link and not a link to just the file. So to get the Figment page or frame URL, you 
select any frame inside Figma before copying the URL. So it's going to be copy link to this page. Yeah, that's what I... Yeah, I can't find copy link to this page anywhere. I, I managed to find it at some point, but now I can't find it. That's really if weird. If you're looking at like the gallery of them, are there any options? Oh, like if you're back in like the page where it shows all of them? Okay, can you click anything there? Well, no. I think that copy link is the one that you're not supposed to use. Let me see. Okay, gotcha. I was just thinking maybe it was like on that yeah. screen. Copy a specific page link or frame link, not a link to just the file. Yeah, that's what I did multiple gotcha. times that, gotcha. and then I managed to find it though. Customer project, no. Yes. I noticed in the screenshot there was like a white background. <laughs> that's what I was trying to. Copy link to page, of course, way up here. It ah. says page one and it says copy link to page. So it's right under your face, but. <laughs> That's that's a nice, um, nice and intuitive there. All right, create. Now I, I clicked to create it as a tablet, but I made it as like a um, phone size. So that'll be interesting to see what it does. And maybe it, hopefully it'll bring across those pretty um, LSU colors that I put on it. Yeah, look at that. So that's pretty nice looking. So this is gonna be really useful if you have an app that has to have a lot of very specific colors and design on it. And, but I'm still like, it took my rectangles of course and put them as rectangles in my power app. So I'm gonna need those to be text boxes. So I'm gonna have to delete that and insert text input box instead. So probably in Figma, I would assume that there's a way to put text input boxes. Um, but maybe not. Maybe the point of it is really just the design that's behind where your form is going to be. So that's, um, yeah, it's got my colors exactly, exactly how I had them though. So that's, that's good. All right. I'll do save my test Figma and I'm reading kind of some of the comments. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. So everybody's very optimistic in the comments. So it is a brand new feature. So the kind of the, the gist of the comments are that it's, it's brand new. So maybe that's why it's kind of rough. So it is a little messy, but um, hopefully they'll improve and improve the AI and improve like the ability to um, maybe add SharePoint as a data source. And then uh, if it did that, then it would be creating, uh, potentially creating a SharePoint list for you. So now that I've shown you what, um, what it does and what it, what exists in this new functionality, and you're probably wondering, um, how can I do something kind of simple like that if my data is in SharePoint and have some simple steps to take some, some data and make an app from it or a list or a spreadsheet and make an app from it. Um, I did do an entire power hour about this, but I want to in the lot along the lines of going through a wizard to create a power app. I want to go through this process of taking this list of fields and creating ultimately creating a power app from it. So this is going to be, this is a spreadsheet where I created some columns to create uh, potentially a list of projects and maybe a little app that lets us fill out um, a project form. Okay, so this is the, these are the steps we're gonna go through now to go through sort of the same concept, but with, um, with SharePoint as the data source. And it's not gonna be as much as the design of having little text boxes in certain places on a screen, but it's gonna be the process of easily creating a set of fields and creating a form from it. So I've got project name, project manager, completion goal date, completion actual date, budget goal, budget actual, main stakeholder, and department. And those are just gonna be the fields in my project list that I'm gonna create. So I'm going to go to SharePoint. And let's see, where did I put this file? Let me see. To put it in SharePoint. So I'll go to documents in here and um, I'm going to do file C. 
say that. I'm just going to save it and just go through the process of putting it in SharePoint and then going through this import process. So I'm going to start with this project spreadsheet and just upload it to this library called Documents. And so now I have my project spreadsheet. So now I'm going to go back to my home page. And Joel, interrupt me if um, there's anything like important that that people are asking that I need to address as I'm doing this. So I'm going to say new list and then from Excel. And then it's going to, by default, show me libraries in, um, in the site that I'm in. But of course, I can switch to another library here. But here's my project spreadsheet. I'll go next. And then this is the similar concept to it's going to take me through mapping the field. So I need to select a table from this file. So I don't have a table in the file. So what that's something that important that I need to do before it'll let me go through this process. So let's go ahead and add a table to my file. And I need to open this up in the client software, not in, um, not in the, uh, the, the web version of it. So, all right, so here we are in the client software. I'll do insert table and then um, let me just put a little bit of data well let's see insert table my table has headers and then tell it what my table is like that I just put a couple of empty rows there so now I have officially have a table in my spreadsheet and I save it and then Go back home, go back to new list from Excel, project spreadsheet, and then um, I think it didn't refresh it. Let me see, open the Excel document. Yep, it's got a table in it. What did I name my table? Table test. Oh yeah, see I can't do it in the web. For some reason, it doesn't know that I did it already. I probably just need to refresh it. I do need to give it a name, though. So let me go ahead and give my um, table a better name. So any questions about that whole, that other process? It, wa it was kind of brief. I mean, the process of importing images. Um, is there anything additional that you think that you have questions about regarding the image process and getting the image over in as a power app and kind of things that to talk about. I'll call this project table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, project table. There we go. Save. Okay, that is saved. I think that I think I feel like I did this last time where it took a, a couple of saves and refreshes for it to realize that I made those changes in the spreadsheet. There we go, loading tables. Okay. So it is it, it did find my table. I'm not sure why it doesn't have the name that I gave it, but that's fine. And then here's where you have to do sort of that mapping concept. So project manager is not going to be a number. Project manager is going to be, I'll just say text. Completion goal date is going to be a date and time. Completion action date, date and time. Um, and the title is important because the title is going to be the thing that you click on in the list. And so that's why I want that to be the project name. And then my budget goal is a number that's going to be currency though. The main stakeholder, I'll just say that's going to be text, department, um, choice. And then you could pick do not import if you have a column that you don't want. <laughs> I misspelled it. Project spreadsheet. Okay. So now this is, again, starting out with just a spreadsheet with typing the names of my columns across the top. This is what it gives me. And I even had a couple of rows. Notice I, I created a couple of empty rows in the spreadsheet. Look at that, Joelle. It actually created them as data. If I, if I would have typed something in them, it actually created them as data. So um, 
it's it actually would have been even more helpful if I had data in there because it would have been able to easy, more easily discern what type of column things need to be. Like if I had dates typed in there, it would know it was a date column, etc. So I had a couple of empty rows, which it created as empty rows. But that is my um, just simple way of getting uh, just a regular form in there. But then the next step, if you wanted to go full full circle and turn this into a Power App, then a kind of a different way of using a different wizard to generate uh, a form from a Power App. This is um, how you do it. So I'm customizing the form this way. Does that make sense? What do you all think? <laughs> Still talking about Figma. Anything else? Figma has a steep learning curve, said Larry. Yes. I um, I could not figure it out. I've, I've spent less than an hour in there, though. So, <laughs> all right. So here's my form that it generated for me. And then if I wanted to have a color theme, I can um, just click on one of these. And it always has a weird font when you do that, a weird font size. I'm not sure why when you use those little color themes. All right. So that, I'll go ahead and go back to SharePoint, save and publish. So that gives me a form control, which has everything built in. It has the save functionality. It has the, um, I can, let me refresh this so that it knows I've got a power app. I've got the, it's got the submit form built in. It's got updating existing items built in. It's all just in there. Um, so I don't have to do any kind of craziness with um, patching or anything. So I'll do my, I am very um, optimistic about this project. I'm gonna have it done really, really quickly. <laughs> and then I didn't give it any choices for what the department choices need to be. So that's kind of my bad on that one, but I'll go ahead and click save. I can delete those empty rows. And yeah, so even if you have, and I can't even spell test, <laughs> even if you have an existing spreadsheet with all the stuff in it. Now, again, that's not the same thing as visually having a picture of a form, but in my experience, when it comes to data and business processes and people filling out forms, it's less about having things be pic pixel perfect as far as fields down the form, and it's more about having the data fields be correct and the correct type of data fields. And then once they're in that form control, it's easy to just kind of rearrange them in there. So to me, that's a little bit easier. But um, a lot of it, those big companies might have, um, you know, have an actual design team and have a need to have the ability to have all their apps look exactly a certain way and have the layout a certain way and maybe shapes and logos and things like that done. Um, for a more visually appealing app and less of a business process form type of app. Um, Joelle, what do you think? What do you think about the different options? Um, the importing from an image Figma and then the good old import from spreadsheet that's been there for 12 years. <laughs> yeah, I think the, as far as like the power apps, Thing. I think I pretty much agree with what everybody was saying. Whereas I, or what, what you mentioned too, is I think like the image one uh -huh. is probably not going to be as utilized just because I feel like you had to rework so much stuff. But I do feel like the Figma thing for those companies that do need that a highly designed app, then that, that have a designer because the designers work in that type of environment and they can just spit out a file once they design it, that can then get imported in. So I think that would make sense in those situations. But yeah, the picture one is interesting because I feel like there's just so much work you had to do after you brought it in that it was just like, was it worth it? I guess I would have to kind of see the situation to see. But Yeah. Um, so. If you have Dataverse as your data source, so it makes it a little bit more worth it because it yeah. goes and heads ahead and creates all those database fields for you. Yeah, yeah, But that's true. I'm still conflicted about all the, the containers inside of the cards and then the amount of yeah. time to kind of arrange those. Because when you have a data yeah. source already and you just go into a Power App and you just click to add a form control, it, it just puts all of your fields in there for you 
and then all you do is drag them around. But this put them in yeah. in a weird way that requires you to have to spend more time. I don't know because the the alignment was a little weird and things like that. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm conflicted on that one. I think I think it could be potentially really useful for um, using Dataverse. So yeah. Yeah, so um, that just about wraps it up. Any last um, any last questions about that? Um, Susan says, if you have a Microsoft form, you can use Excel behind and use that to create the list in SharePoint. Save time in creating the list. Yeah. So some people use a Microsoft form. If you need, if you need to have people like anonymous people or people in your company filling out a one-way form and never needing to go to the place where the form is getting submitted to, and you don't want them having access to where it goes, it's and they, they never need to open it up again. Microsoft Forms is great. Um, but then, yeah, she's right about just using Excel to quickly have it create that SharePoint list behind the scenes, just by typing all the column names across the top like I did. Um, uh, let's see, we have, um, where is that? So next week, what I'm going to do is we're going to do this. Um, this is a quick preview of next week. We're going to do the, the 360 image concept because I, um, went through this process of building out this SharePoint space with a interior designer and um, like building out this whole thing. And I'm going to, so I'm going to show you how in some industries you could potentially use um, the SharePoint spaces to be able to have like this walkthrough concept. So that's, that's a fun little preview of what I'm going to do next week. And so that's going to be kind of more of a light, fun one and kind of a creative one. And um, think about potentially in your industry, how, you could use something like that, even if it's just welcoming new employees to your company and showing them around your lobby or your department and um, just concepts like that to kind of make people feel at home. All right. So um, you can always go to iwmentor.com and look at our schedule to see when the next power hour is. So the next one is going to be next Wednesday, um, June 22nd. And um, that's where you can find our schedule. And... That's about all. Check out our training, and um, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining. Bye, everybody.